welcome dear friends today we have a session on introduction to vocabulary building okay so whenever you appear for any campus recruitment exam you will find that apart from questions on grammar there are some questions which check your vocabulary what exactly is vocabulary vocabulary is nothing but the repertoire of words you know of okay vocabulary is that collection of words which you have in your mind so basically questions on vocabulary test your knowledge of words and their meanings so here again let me tell you friends let me tell you in the very beginning there are no shortcuts for building vocabulary okay here the most important thing is that you have to keep on learning new words and their meanings right in this class it's not possible for us to learn all the words in english and their meanings okay it's out of question so what i would like to do is that i would like to give you certain tips on building your vocabulary okay following these tips you have to build your vocabulary you have to put in hard work you have to do something every day okay these are steps which you have to follow every day in order to build your vocabulary so i can't help you learn all the words but i can i can give you certain guidelines to follow or rather certain methods to help you build your vocabulary so let's check out dear friends before speaking about methods of vocabulary building let me first tell you a couple of things which you have to follow religiously certain things which you have to follow every day so the first among them is you have to read an english newspaper every day okay so this is essential for two things one is to improve your knowledge base and the second is to improve your language base okay so it will definitely help you when you go for your group discussion and your interview okay there you know that when you go for a group discussion you need stuff you need raw material for producing goods right similarly when you are given a topic and when you want to speak about it you need to have information if you don't have information inside your head then whatever you speak will be bluff okay and that won't be accepted at any group discussion so you have to speak sensibly and you have to be accurate so for that first you need information and second you need language as well okay maybe you have a lot of information in in your head but if you're not putting it in the right way again it's not going to make any impact so you need to build your language as well so an english newspaper can help you achieve both these things at one shot okay so please make newspaper reading a habit next thing so just reading a newspaper won't help what you have to do whenever you find a new word please refer that word to the dictionary okay you have to mark that word and then later on you have to take a dictionary locate that word in the dictionary and find out its meaning and the ways in which it can be used what part of speech it is so both these habits have to go hand in hand in conjugation these two things would really help you in bettering your language and in particular your vocabulary okay so please keep these things in mind these are prerequisites and now let's move on to certain methods for building your vocabulary the first method is what i would like to call the etymological method okay so have you heard of the word etymology etymology is the study of the evolution of words okay how words originated and gradually changed their meanings to come to their present meaning that study is what you call etymology 
okay so the thing is that how many words do you think the english language has it has millions of words but where did all these words come from most of these words have been borrowed from other languages okay so many english words have their origin in languages like french greek latin etc okay so there are certain root words once you find out the root of a word then you will discover that many words in english language share a common root so in that way you will be able to connect words in a certain manner and register them in your memory okay so what i am going to explain now is based on the method which norman lewis follows in his popular book word power made easy okay so what i am going to speak now is based on this book so now let's see how tracing the roots of words would help us in connecting different words and learning them easily let's try this out through certain examples i think at least some of you must have heard of this word introvert okay what does the word mean let me tell you in the very beginning it's not really helpful to mug up words and their meanings okay you don't need to mug up words but what you have to do is you need to have an overall idea regarding what a word means the subtle shades of meaning and its various connotations okay so without defining introvert let me describe who an introvert is an introvert is a person who would like to keep to himself he is not a very social or gregarious kind of a person okay he is shy in the company of others he doesn't talk much and he would like to be in his own world okay so from where did this word originate please think about it this word can be split into two parts okay and this word comes from a latin word verto which means to turn okay and intro you can easily guess is inward okay so in short an introvert is a person whose thoughts are turned inwards so that is how the word introverts originates and we know the opposite of introvert is at least some of you must have guessed it is extrovert so this word also comes from the same root word okay intro extrovert is a person whose thoughts are turned outwards now i suppose it's easy for you to guess the meaning of extrovert an extrovert is a very social person a person who would like to go out with friends and enjoy right who is very gregarious so such a person is an extrovert now there is something in between extrovert and an an introvert who has a character which is a mixture of the characters of introvert and extrovert and such a person we would call ambivert so this word again comes from the same root verto okay so ambivert is a person who sometimes is an introvert and sometimes an extrovert right this word again can be split into two ambi ambi means both okay so that is how we get ambivert a person who is both an introvert and an extrovert is called an ambivert so from this ambivert ambi is another root word from which originates the word a 
ambidextrous ambidextrous is the adjective used to describe a person who has the ability to use both his hands with equal skill okay you must have heard of people who can write with both hands there are people who can write with the right hand as well as the left hand and there are people who can bowl with both the right hand as well as the left hand so such people are whom we call ambidextrous dear friends the word ambidextrous again can be split into two we have already seen ambi and dextrous is again another root word dextrous comes from the latin word dexter okay so dexter means right hand okay so we see that from this root word we have ambidextrous dexter means right hand and we also have another word which originates from dexter that is dextrous okay dextrous so dextrous means someone who is skillful at things okay so in olden days right hand always stood for things which are good and left hand stood for things which are bad so if there is a word for the right hand then you must be thinking that obviously there must be a word for left hand as well yes you guessed it right the word for left hand is sinister okay this word as such is used in english language okay this word has been borrowed to english language without any modification and sinister means someone who has a criminal attitude okay someone who is nefarious or someone who is obnoxious can be referred to using the word sinister so dexter i told you and sinister also i told in french also there are words for right hand and left hand so the french word for right hand is droit okay in french the word for right hand is droit this word has been borrowed into english and from this root word we have the word adroit okay adroit adroit which comes from droit again means someone who's skillful okay and naturally if droit is a word which stands for right hand in french so there must be another word for left hand as well yes and that word is gosh it's pronounced gosh g a u c h e so gosh also has been directly borrowed into english when you say someone is gosh it means that he is socially awkward okay he doesn't have the tactfulness to mingle with people so someone who is socially awkward can be referred to as gosh so friends now we have seen how we started from one word and dug up the root of that word and how we found that the same root is shared by certain other words okay so here we are connecting words see how many new words we have learned so starting from one word we have proceeded to many words so if you are following this method you will find it easy to register words in your memory